All right, so let's keep going. We're gonna try it. First, let's try to submit the form with nothing. And ooh, look at this, the message field is required. Or if I go a very long, 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 long copy and paste many times, this is definitely more than 255. You can see that this ain't good. But if I say, hello, dear YouTubers, and I try to submit that, hey, we have a problem. Let's go back and see what I've done wrong. All right, I have added the chirps function to the user model. User model public function user has many, this has many. Ah, and I know what I've done wrong. It's not user here because we are on the user model. You've probably seen this. I want to create chirps. All right, let's save this. Let's go to our dashboard, go chirps, try create a new chirp. So I'm going to submit this. Aha, now this time, I did not have any error. And if I go in table plus and refresh, here we go. We have our message, try create a new chirp attached to the user ID of one, which is the only user I have. And you can see here, uh, it shows you a different way to create and play with data instead of doing it in the front end form. There's this artisan tinker REPL, which is kind of cool. So let's try that PHP artisan tinker. It's going to start this REPL. Then we can get stuff from a database. So from memory, if I run this, this is actually not going to work uh, for me. I need to go through the, maybe I have something set wrong, but I need to go through the whole namespace, which is app models backslash, and then chirp all. You can see that I can find this try create a new chirp. All right, so let's exit Tinker. And now we're gonna start showing the chirps on the next step. So in our chirp controller, we're going to fill up this index response here. And where we just render the chirp slash index, we want to pass some data as well. A chirps property, which is fetching chirp, the chirp model, and it's going to eager load the user where we want the ID and name. Then we want to sort them and get them from the database. So let's copy that here. The tutorial is going to explain exactly what it does. The eloquent ORM has this with method that eager loads, it fetches the attached relationships data at the same time, instead of having to do it in a loop and have this n plus one problem that you might face. And so we get the user with the ID and name and then sort them in non uh, in reverse chronological order. So remember, we've done the relationship one way, the has many, but we want to do the opposite, the belongs to from the chirp model. So in the chirp model, we're going to have a user function, which is the reverse relationship that we've done on the user model with the chirps has many. So I'm going to copy that. So on the chirp model, I will see if I can auto import that thing. Yeah, there you go. So now we added a user property on the chirp. This chirp belongs to that user. And by default here, this is because we go to the user table. It's looking for the user underscore ID table cell name. So there's a naming convention. If you had named it differently, you'd need to, I think, specify it like foo or whatever you named that field. So again, lots of convention. In most of the cases, it makes so much sense to stick to that convention to kind of be productive. All right, so now that our model has a user, if I go back to Tinker, I'm going to create a chirp variable and set it to app models chirp. And instead of getting all of them, I will just, I think that works, get the first. So this should give me the first uh, message, yep. But now if I go chirp and I want the user, check this out the user, which is this function we've added to the chirp model, I can reach for the data of the user that's attached to that chirp. That's pretty cool. All right, we're getting sidetracked again, but I'm really excited. So let's, uh, 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 we can update our create component. Oh, we're going to create a chirp component. You can see in the components directory here. So again, I'm gonna paste that first and look at it next. Back in the code, let's go in our JS folder, we have a components directory. I'm going to add a chirp.jsx. So here, very simple, we have a React component that receives a chirp and then we just render it. There's nothing specific, it's literally just rendering that uh, using the created at date and the message. So let's save that. And my guess is we're going to update the chirp index route. There we go 
to actually display this component. So we're just going to receive the chirps as a second prop with the auth. And then I imagine we map over it. Yep, just like this. So let's copy that. And just under the form in chirps index.php, under the form, we're going to paste that. And I need to import that chirp component unless it's done it for me. Nope. Import chirp from add components slash chirp. So remember where we receive the auth, we also want to receive the chirps. And that chirps that we receive is passed from the chirp controller. You can see here, we pass that. So we render this inertia view with the chirps property, which is that. And so by doing this, we receive it here and can render it. This is super cool. So you receive the props uh, from the backend. In Next.js, you would go, you used to go uh, get static props or get server-side props to get some data from somewhere. Or in the app directory, we, you have an async component that fetches that data and then passes it as props. Here, it's passed from the Laravel backend straight into your React frontend. And so if we visit our chirps route, you can see the new chirp is here. And now the cool thing is because we've already wired up this form to work, Let's try to create another chirp and submit. Bang! One more, woohoo! Send it. And I can refresh the page. I can log out here. Let's register another user called Simon2. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Register. If I go to chirps, I can see the chirps uh, that belong to Simon of Rashliotis. This is Simon2. Stepping in, right? Chop chop. So you can see now there's this conversation going. Uh, we have two users. We have four chirps. In table plus, you can see they belong to user one, except the last one. Uh, and we have two users here. So everything's working really nicely. Just for fun, say that this one belonged to user two. I have to hit save to persist. And now back in the front end, uh, this one will be assigned to Simon two instead. All right, so we're at the point where we don't have a CRUD operation set up, but we have this create and read. So we have a crew app <laughs> working and I'm going to take a break because I have to do some work for my day job. And tonight or later today or this weekend or sometime, I'm going to pick it up. I might have a different shirt on because this is going to be another time of the day or the week, but I will pick it up exactly from here and keep going through the tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed it so far. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, uh, comments, if I've done something fundamentally wrong. I'm sure I have. And yeah, see you later. Bye.